landscape. Now, when we go to YouTube next week, I'll be able to turn the phone, the camera, a whole 90 degrees, and we'll get a big wide screen. We'll be able to see more. I'll be able to get up close more and be able to show you more detail. And I think they said that if I did it on, um, on YouTube and you get this amount of people watching, I'll, I'll get 68 cents uh, a week credited to my account. So I just wanted you guys to know it's, <laughs> it's not about the money. It's because I wanted to make it a, more accessible. Uh, also, I'll, I'll be able to have um, questions and answers for people on YouTube because there's not this delay. We have a, I don't know, it's 15 or 35 or 40 second delay when you ask me a question and then you disappear off the screen before I get a chance to address it or, or answer it. So we might be able to do better on YouTube next week and it will be Tech Talk Tuesday number 182. And same time, everybody, I just want you to know, if you have Facebook, which you do because you're seeing me now, you will be able to go on YouTube. Now my, my channel is called George Bryce Star. George Bryce Star. And it's, uh, if, you, if you subscribe, to the YouTube channel of my YouTube channel, I will send a notification that says George is going live. I think that's how it works, but I am very much a rookie. I know y'all remember three and a half years ago when I first started this on Facebook, I could never get the camera to the right angle and it was a little bit struggling for everybody, but thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Um, and I got a good story to tell and some good stuff I wanna share. So um, thanks for coming in again. I see all these really cool names popping up. I'm very thankful. For all of that so this content will still remain uh, really great uh, technical um, information and sharing uh, i did get to go to the uh, engine uh, performance expo over in johnson city this past week they had 60 or 70 episodes at uh, engineexpo.com they're still on there they'll be on forever you can go over there and and go to that website after this show and you can look at some unbelievable two days worth of great content. I was able to um, share in six or seven of the episodes, which was a lot of fun for me. I was getting to hang out with my, um, my heroes and um, there was a lot of great people there. And I had a lot of fun sharing ideas, sharing stories, and we got to address some issues that are important in our industry <clears throat> in the high performance industry. And I was the only motorcycle guy there out of 50 or 100 hot rod engine guys. So I was really honored to be included in that. And um, it was fun. Okay, over to the nut and bolts of the show. Let's go here. Tech Talk Tuesday 181. I'm going to go over a couple things about a story about Ed Hedrick, <clears throat> 28 inch flow bench information. Here's the website where the expo was, engineperformanceexpo.com. And Blue 5 -0. We did a lot of work on him this week. We got the wheel and tire on. I don't have the chain and sprockets on yet, but it's coming. I was able to get the Boosa wheel powder coated. Look how nice a job they did. Got the tank on. What's unique about this police bike is the tachometer is right here in the gas tank, which is not easy to look at. Police speedometer is up here. That's kind of cool. And then I got the uh, two inch lowering kit installed in the fort so you can see. Oh, police bike's a little stubby looking now, but it's going to be really fun. Uh, to race and ride. We got a lot more stuff to do to it yet. This we got the injectors in it for real. I think they're 8.2s or 8.4s. I've got the uh, big moonshine uh, monster manifold and the 70 millimeter throttle body HPI. And I have my 615 cam in it along with stock rock arms which I showed you guys. And just for you new guys this is a big old giant 4.6 bore with a 4.37 size stroke. That makes a 580 cubic inch V8. This is the front two cylinders of a giant V8. And uh, got big pipes on it. I've still got a little bit of, we got to fab up the, the bracket that holds the pipe on in the back. And it's got, a, it's a muffler. 
So it's, and it is a real street bike. I mean, I got my, I got insurance. I got a tag. I've only got a couple months left on this tag because that's how long ago I bought the motorcycle. I had no idea it would take me this long to get it running, but I, I hope to get to do some dyno shootouts with it. And uh, the seat came in today, but I left it in the other shop over there. So I'll show you that another time, but it looks good with the seat on it. Let you look at that a second. Turn the heat off. All right, now we're going to go to the story. Thank you guys for tuning in. I did say something about this one day, and I don't know if you can read this really good, but I'm going to let this down and let you see. Over the Darlington time, I saw where uh, Denny Hamlin's throwback car was based off of Slick Johnson from Florence, South Carolina. His name was Julius Johnson, and uh, he, was a, he, he was a NASCAR racer. He was local for us, and he's the one that taught me how to do balancing. He taught me boring hone. He taught me how to use a home plate. He taught me how to use a Sun and CK-10. He taught me how to do valve jobs. He gave me my first instructions on 3D, I mean, three angle valve jobs and stuff. And this was Slick Johnson's car. And Denny, last year on the throwback weekend, Joe Gibbs Racing and the guys all put together a really cool idea to put Denny Hamlin's throwback car based off of Slick's paint job. So this was an honor. It was, uh, I think it was called, um, honored the late Julius Slick Johnson. And a South Carolina native. Not only that, but it hit. That was this. That was South Carolina. Yeah, Darlington and Florence were right there together. And uh, that's the guy. This is the the go. You know, the throwback to, to go back to the story is Slick Johnson. When Jackie and I were teenagers, and we had just gotten into hot rodding. And last week, I told you all about the big block Chevrolet that uh, Jackie bought for with her babysitting money, and we took it over to Honest Charlie Speed Shop. And then we did all our machine work over there when Slick Johnson was the shop manager at um, Honest Charlie's in Florence. And then he moved over to Central Oil and Supply. They had a big machine shop over there, and he got a lot more um, jobs and stuff. But anyway, that was my guy forever and forever until we moved to Georgia where we opened Star Racing, and that was 43 years ago. So I always remember the great stories and the great education that Slick gave me. And it was like I had the guy from uh, How to Hot Rod Big Black Chevrolet's local just down the street from me. So that was a great time. Um, a lot of folks didn't know him. His daddy's name was Junior Johnson, but it's not the Junior Johnson that's famous. It was just they were just local circle track racers and made an impact, Im, a big impact on my career. So what circles around this is in 1977... I got a Kawasaki 1000, and I looked up in the International Drag Bike Association rule book, and I saw a guy named Ed Hedrick, never heard of him, from Pennsylvania, had the world's record for AA stock. That's, uh, that's the fastest stock eliminator class. And I got the rule book and read up on it, and you had to run the stock exhaust. You had to run the stock wheels and tires. You had to run... Uh, the original tire, you, if you burned a tire up, you had to get it. And that, and that my stock motorcycle came with uh, just Goodyear's, and I had to run stock Goodyear's. We, there was no racing tire. You weren't allowed a slick. You weren't allowed a street racer. No DO, only real. Back then, there were no DOT racing tires. It was just whatever. So I went to, Jackie and I went to an IDBA race, and he was there. And he was a really nice guy. He was he he was um, had beautiful white leathers and a white helmet and always wore the cool Ray-Ban sunglasses, and he had the record at 12.08. And I, me and Jackie went home, and we practiced and practiced and practiced at Darlington International Dragway. Nope, sorry, Darlington Dragway. It was a little teeny-weeny little track that Tommy Hewitt had. It was a little, it had two lanes, and it had grass in the middle. And I knew that if I could go quicker and quicker and quicker until finally I went a number, that using the math in the rule book that said, if you go this in the eighth, you can go this in the quarter. And when I finally got it to go 1190s, I decided to go enter in 1978. 
And I want to tell you, man, when you run a stock tire on a stock motorcycle and there were no grippy, sticky tires, this. <laughs> I'm going to show you a style that got me the record, and it's not pretty, and it's nobody does it now. But this is how the only way we could get traction. So what I would do is I would launch as soon as I could. We were allowed a wheelie bar. I'd set it on the bar and put all my weight as far back as I could reach and put my weight on the rear tire just so it would hook. And I let all the air out and it would, the rim would slip and it would pinch the tube off. The rim would slip and it would pinch the stem off the tube. So we had to start figuring out how to tighten those little rims, those little deals up to save the, the tube. But anyway, this is, this is the double A stock KZ-1000 that it was an LTD that I actually was able to break Ed Hedrick's record uh, in the International Drag Bike Association. Now, let me tell you how ironic this is. So later in my career, I realized that this is the guy that drove Bill Jenkins' cars. Ed Hedrick was a test driver. He worked for Bill. He drove probably 20 or 30 different cars that Bill Jenkins, Grumpy Jenkins. Ed Hedrick, I saw a post on... Um, Facebook the other day where it had a picture of a 72 Chevy with the 396 in it or 71 Chevy was running in a stock class and Ed Hedrick set the record with that, uh, with that car. So it's the same Ed Hedrick. I looked him up and now when I put something on Facebook, this guy right here, he's still on Facebook and he's still connect. We're connected. He'll send me a little like or a little heart. And, um, <laughs> let me tell y'all, that's how long ago is that? 77. Goodness gracious, that's, I don't know, man, 56 years ago, 46 years ago. Yeah, Ed Hedrick, swip, he switched to the KZ750. Um, he also he also set the record with lots of different, I think he ran five different bikes that year so he could get more points, and he set five different records with five different motorcycles. And I see some of you guys have heard of him, but that's not the Tech Talk Tuesday side that I wanted to tell you, but that was a story I wanted to share with you that, this guy right here, Slick Johnson, Slick Johnson taught me. He did the valve, three-angle valve job, board and hone, decked. We put 10 over pistons in this bike within the legal limits. We surfaced the head 10 thou. We surfaced the block 10 thou. He showed me how to get the piston to head close. He showed me how to get the, oh, the greedy cams. We had those, those uh, uh, sprockets with the rubber on them, and he, he showed me to take a Dremel tool and put slots in the cam sprocket bolt holes so I could advance or retard the cams. And this motorcycle right here, if you'll look, it has two cams. It has an exhaust cam and an intake cam. So when I turned out to be a pretty good engine builder and started setting records and building engines, I never knew what lobe separation was because this intake cam, I would rotate it wherever I wanted to for it to go fast. And this exhaust cam, I'd rotate it to wherever it would go fast. And I learned to start moving the lash, put it loose lash, and get tight lash and get get uh, more top end power with almost two thou lash and then I could get more low end power if I needed to. I could put ten thou lash on it. And I learned all this stuff just going to the drag strip several times a week. Jackie and I went Friday, Saturday and Sunday, some track somewhere and we ran and ran and ran. And finally we were able to work our way up. But this is the first bike I entered in the International Drag Bike Association. So this was the start of that career that we can read about or see anywhere now, what George Bryce and Star Racing did. This is way before Star Racing. This is probably three or four years before we even opened our shop. But that's the history from Ed Hedrick. Try, I was trying to outrun a Hedrick. He was the man. He was like my um, Terry Vance back then. He was the guy that had the record in my class, and I wanted to outrun him. And, did, and, and Slick Johnson, who Denny Hamlin did the throwback car on, was the guy that taught me how to do the engine work. So Jackie's unboxing boxes of stuff that we still haven't looked at. <laughs> and uh, we, these, we keep finding these new pictures. So that was interesting. I did put this little note here to remind you guys that, um, that we are going to move to the tech, uh, to the YouTube channel and try it. And if something goes wrong, listen to me, you guys, you faithful followers, the ones that want to see this, and if you can't see me live, it, it's going to always be recorded, and we will be able to put it on my Facebook page. If you can't go here, just know it'll be a little bit later. It will be downloaded, 
and put on my Facebook page so you can see it. But I'm going to go live on YouTube 6 o'clock next Tuesday, and it will be on my channel, which is George Bryce Star. So you can see what it looks like. I have it on my card here, and I will move it up to you. It's called, it's the Instagram account, YouTube, at George Bryce Star. You can see that, right, everybody? Please take note of that so you can follow then. All right? Thanks. Now, this gets in my face all the time. I got a lot of friends that are experts, superheroes. I'm a big fan. Uh, they're smart. I, I look up to them for information and inspiration, and they are convinced that this is a good tool. Now, I have bought all the flow benches in my career. I had the first 110, I had a 300, I had a 600, and then a, I don't even know what the next one was, but I had all the ones all the way up to the 1020, and then we had to update the 1020 with more vacuum cleaner motors so we could get more depression. And then we started making really big heads with giant valves, and the heads would flow 700 CFM. And it was really hard to get enough um, enough of the vacuum cleaner motors to simulate what the engine was asking for. And I'm not bagging on anybody about a flow bench. I'm just gonna give you my idea and my opinions because today somebody says they got a 131 Harley and they've got a stock throttle body on it and they said that somebody was telling them, and I'm telling them, that their throttle body's holding, their, holding them back. They wanna know why they didn't make more power. They, didn't, they couldn't understand why they didn't have as much torque down, down low and didn't have enough horsepower up top. And it's because they got a 107 cubic inch throttle body on a 131 cubic inch engine. So when you put a little teeny little inch and five eighths exhaust pipe on with a stock exhaust manifold on your 131, one, your 128, your 124, whatever Milwaukee 8 you're building, and then you go and ask your flow bench guy, your cylinder head guy, he says, he says, well, that throttle body flows more than a cylinder head. So you don't need a big one. Well, this is the part that I want you to hear. And this is my opinion. So if you guys want to argue with me or whatever, that's fine. But it's just going to be my opinion. But this is how, yes, it will be live next week on YouTube. Same time. Um, this is what I want to try and explain to you. When a guy says that he puts a manifold, he flows the head on a Milwaukee 8, and it flows 300 CFM. And then he puts the manifold on and it still flows 300 CFM. So then he says, you know what? Take the head off, put the manifold on, flow the manifold. The manifold flows more than the head. Manifold flows 320, cylinder head flows 300. So you don't have to, then you put the throttle body on there, the little 55 millimeter throttle body. I have one I'm going to show you. I thought I had one available. I do. Here it is. This is a stock 55 millimeter throttle body for a Milwaukee 8. All right. I just wanted you to be able to see that. This flows, when this is open, it flows more than the cylinder head on a flow bench. But listen to me 28 inches right here. There is that when the engine is running at peak torque or peak horsepower or at full song, its engine is flowing, asking for more than 28 inches. So when you flow the head and it flows 300 CFMs, just say it flows 300, just to pull a number up. And then you put the manifold on and it still flows 300. And then you say, well, what's, how could it be the same? So you take it and you put the manifold on and it flows 320. Then put the throttle body on, and it still flows 320. So both of those, the manifold and the throttle body, outflow the head. But that's at 28 inches, folks. And when your engine is at full song, full throttle, and it's going up through the RPM range, it's asking for more than 28 inches. It's asking for 50, 60, 70, maybe 100 inches. And I'm telling you what, man, when you get up to how much airflow that is when you get this little 28 up to say 30, I mean, say 50 or say 60 or say 70, 
it goes up so high that this throttle body is a restriction. Please understand, there is no restriction here when you're only pulling enough air through it to idle or pulling enough air through it to run 3,000 RPM. There is no restriction here. But when your engine, this engine, I promise you, this engine has a 70 millimeter throttle body on it. I'm going to hold this up there so you can see the difference. How about that? Let's do that one for just a second. Flange looks almost the same size, but look at the butterfly. See how big this butterfly is and how big this butterfly is. And that that throttle, that 70 millimeter throttle body flows a lot of air. And this engine right here is asking for a lot of air. So I haven't found one yet that flows enough um, to give you everything you could use. But there's 28 inches is used to be a really big number back in the day. That number 28 was invented as a flow bench test standard, say, decades ago. And it's been stuck there ever since, even though we've doubled our horsepower since back in the day. We're still saddled with this test pressure. 28 inches is a good standard. I love when you do it, when you do a flow bench and you test on a flow bench, you gotta have at least 28 inches to see some good changes. So you, when you make a little teeny change to a port, you can see the gain or the loss. And I, I have some friends that are really, really, they believe this like I believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, it's just my belief. And they have their belief, and that's cool. And I'm not trying to make them change their belief. I'm offering my opinion. We need more than 28 inches to see what's really going on. Also, when the valve's opening, the valve is opening 100, 200, 300, 400, but they only test at 28 inches. I'm telling you, that whole thing is the piston goes the piston goes down in your engine, and that's what creates the depression. But our piston's going up and down a hundred times a second at six thousand RPM. So there's a lot of action going on, and the flow bench just goes one way, one way, one way, and it goes steady state, one way, steady state, and we just open the valve 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and this, and we have to keep turning the vacuum cleaner motors inside the flow bench up to try to get it to stay on 28 inches. And if we re-radius the floor or cut on the roof or narrow up around the valve guides or whatever, we hope to see the CFM go up while we zero this out at 28 inches at every lift. And that's a great way to learn. It works. But don't let the flow bench at 28 inches tell you how big the port needs to be because if you did, you would, you would say this one flows enough because according to the flow bench, this outflows the head. But I'm going to tell you the truth. If you have a 131 cubic inch engine, which I'm going to tell you the numbers, that's four and a half stroke and a 4.310 bore. And that engine makes 140 horse, maybe 150, a good one. If you put this throttle body on it that flows more than the cylinder head, it's going to make less power because the engine is asking for more than this throttle body can give you, even though the throttle body flows more than the head at 28 inches on a flow bench. Just let that soak in. It's not an argument. I don't know if you followed me. I'm going to try and tell you again. According to the flow bench, the th stock throttle body outflows what the cylinder head will flow. If you got a little baby engine, say 107 cubic inches, that's great. That's what it was designed for. This throttle body was designed to be enough for a stock engine with stock heads. If you put, you take the stock four inch bore out and you put a four 300 bore in it, go up 300 thou on the bore, and you leave this on here, you're going to restrict your horsepower and your torque because there's not enough air to get in there. Even though this says it's enough. And I know there's some great, great arguments or counter information. It's just my opinion, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Would 28 be a starting point, as you say, it moves way up from there? Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, the, 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 the manifold, pr I mean, the, the pressure in the port is zero, up to 100, back to zero, up to 100, back to zero, up to 100, back to zero inches, 100 times a second in reality. And this is a good little tool to measure. It's like, 
If you're going to build an engine, you need a lot of tools. I mean, you need this kind of tool, and you need this kind of tool, and you need all these tools. But this is a tool. This is not the Bible on what makes it go fast. This is something that you would add to the 100 things you measure. This does not tell you if it flows uh, more, if the head flows more and you put a stock throttle body on it uh, and you keep porting the head and keep putting bigger valves in it until the, uh, man, until the throttle body, the head flows just as good as the throttle body, I'm telling you, this is still the choke. This is the choke. This is put on at Harley-Davidson for a 107 cubic inch engine. This throttle body is not big enough. On my stock Harley, I put a 64 on it, which is nine millimeters bigger than this because I want more airflow 